Good morning, everyone, and a warm welcome to everyone who's taken time out from their busy schedules to be a part of this webinar. Uh, today marks the first webinar in the O4S series. And to start with, uh, you know, we thought of focusing on the sector that has possibly been the stronghold in this pandemic, um, and that is agriculture. And uh, aptly, what we are trying to understand for uh, the larger agricultural supply chains is whether the COVID-19 situation is a pause or a refresh for the sector. Uh, the agricultural sector has been the mainstay for our Indian economy, uh, mainly on two fronts. Uh, one is the contribution to the GDP, because we are still very largely an agrarian economy, and also through the financial support that it generates for millions of households which are dependent on agriculture as an occupation. Uh, moreover, it fills the national reserves, which leads to lowering the burden of the imports. Um, if I just have to put numbers to it, the agriculture sector accounts for close to 18% of our India's GDP and provides employment to more than 50% of the entire workforce. Uh, despite all of this, you know, the agricultural ecosystem uh, has been going through several challenges that has thwarted the growth, sustainability, and willingness to change within this sector. To add to the situation, the COVID-19 pandemic has brought things to a grinding halt. Uh, it has made businesses rethink the entire approach. And, you know, we've had these discussions with uh, in closed rooms about good to have versus must have. Uh, but I think, you know, we felt that this is the right time to address the elephant in the room. Uh, so to help us do that today in the inaugural session, we have assembled a group of experts who are not only thought leaders in their domain, but they're also successful business stakeholders. And what we would be, uh, you know, what we would try to do today is ask them to share their views on the challenges in the sector, the impact of COVID-19, whether that is acting as a pause or an enabler of change. And most importantly, the way forward on how we can look at building sustenance and agility in the times to come. So I would like to extend my thanks to our esteemed panelists today, Mr. S.K. Gupta, Mr. Ramana Rao, and Mr. Satish, uh, who despite having multiple commitments took time to be a part of this webinar. So what we will be doing is we will be spending the next 45 to 50 minutes to identify, resonate, and ideate around the challenges and way forward across the entire value chain, right from breeding, processing, distribution, engagement, and digitalization side of things. And we would try to take questions on the relevant topics as we go along. So what I would request all the participants to do is to please ask questions in the Q&A section so that uh, you know wherever there is a relevant discussion that we are having, I would try to bring those questions up and ask our esteemed panelists. So uh, without further ado, what I'm going to do is I will uh, request Mr. Rao uh, to share his uh, you know, uh, thoughts on the entire breeding and processing part of the value chain on pre-COVID, in COVID, and post-COVID. So I'm going to very quickly, you know, put up a presentation that, uh, you know, sir will be presenting and then we will get to it. So just give me a second and I will get started. Over to you, Mr. Rao. Yeah. Uh, good morning, Arsh, and good morning, friends. Uh, I'm going to briefly touch upon uh, uh, manufacturing side challenges, especially during uh, COVID-19 or post-COVID-19. Uh, though I made an elaborate presentation, the idea is, you know, this will be circulated to the participant by Arsh and his team at a later uh, after the presentation is over. So the meanwhile, you know, I'll just quickly go through the main points uh, one by one. 
if you look at the the manufacturing side is a very vast area in uh, the seed business uh, right from uh, research and development then comes to seed production uh, processing and all the ambit of uh, the quality assurance uh, revolving around our entire supply chain process so next harsh next slide yeah if you look at the research and development the main objective of research and development is to breed test and release right products to the farmers as per customer requirements so it's as simple as possible so the next slide i yeah next harsh yeah this slide has got the three components the 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 center one is a key activity on the left side you have a process uh, which is now which is a normal process we follow in a normal situation that is you know pre covid then on the right side it is uh, the post covid situation so if you look at uh, the most of the activity in research and development they accept the evaluation and uh, the active uh, crossing of uh, nurseries and all you know it has affected otherwise you know not much thing but definitely the quality of the work has definitely affected uh, due to uh, shortage of the skilled manpower and uh, most of the time even scientists or breeders also could not visit the fields uh, uh, as a, at a regular intervals especially during initial days of uh, lockdown which happened to be very crucial for certain crops so so if you look at the key activities you know the collection of germplasm not much affected but is because it's a long term implication so since we most of the companies has got uh, sufficient germplasm it might have not affected uh, so badly so the creation of variation which is a continuous job it has definitely has affected due to uh, some sort of you know evaluation and uh, other breeding activity got affected due to skill labor then uh, selection of uh, as a result as a result you know that the, the fixed line selection and evaluation also majorly affected but at the same time since most of the companies will have a strong pipeline so this will not have any uh, serious implications the uh, next so the other key activity is the, the test cross and top cross it is a number game see most of the time you know most of companies goes in hundreds so this activity definitely affected some companies you know who have planned uh, inventory of consumables so they might have not affected uh, thing but few companies you know who just uh, just in time inventory of consumables you know consumables transportation has got affected as a result there is a work affected uh, in the test and top process so if you look at the field trials other than station trials some we could able to manage it but field trials outside the locations of research station got affected so but you know since it is a three four level of testing and that may not have serious immediate implications but long term yes definitely there will be a dent in our testing mechanism so seed multiplication uh, to some extent that uh, the parent seed is uh, got affected because parent seed is normally done in external environment it has definitely got affected so the initial production research for new hybrids so that uh, you know i think you know subsequently there are different teams uh, like you know some companies have got a product a production research dedicated production research team and uh, some companies they get it done through production team so not much implications as far as uh, production research is concerned uh, when it comes to commercial release there are two aspects of uh, commercial release one is in house release and the second is uh, release through coordinated uh, program so unfortunately the most of the many of the coordinated workshops uh, crop workshops could not be undertaken due to covid uh, situation Uh, though webinars are happening but you know webinars are not uh, very highly interactive because it requires uh, dialogue and uh, sometimes push to get the varieties releases so that activity government release mechanism got affected very badly and he knows commercial release 
yes here wherever there is a problem of evaluation evaluation of field trails outside environment definitely it might have affected next next slide so coming back to seed operations when i say seed operation there are two key activities one is hybrid seed production and seed production seed processing of course the quality is there everywhere it is right from uh, r and d to uh, operations you know the quality is everywhere so if you look at it at the end of the uh, day the seed operation has to deliver value for money so when i say value for money it is one is quality then second is the time and the cost cost means optimum cost not low cost low cost is at always at the cost of the quality so the next so next uh, hybrid seed production uh, let us uh, go through the next slide ash quickly next slide ash yeah so here the hybrid luckily for major uh, the production is ravi season for most of the field crops even in some of the vegetable crops also the ravi season is the major uh, season uh, fortunately Uh, up to field verification we have completed before uh, the ups, onset of the covid uh, 19 so regular field monitoring especially to some extent it is affected but some of i think you know the industry has managed very well under this circumstances and sometimes going ahead especially the karif 2020 the field monitoring will definitely have higher cost reason is the field staff for instant to travel intensively number one number two if they want to stay uh, overnight in a particular location the accommodation is a big problem and even there is a uh, fear among the people you know that the, the accommodation though it is uh, it may open up for uh, public after some time the people hesitate to go through accommodation outside accommodation for the fear of uh sanity i mean sorry sanity sanity issues so sanitation issues so regular field monitoring we need to hire a local uh, staff uh, to increase the number at a different level block level so that will definitely increase the uh, supervising cost or its different production or its will be increased to some extent next next harsh yeah uh, sorry sorry da gaya pura so the seed processing i think we have skip to one product one slide in production uh, harsh go back yeah yeah this one okay uh, field uh, the production you know the major activity uh, was uh, roging and detailing in uh, ravi production somehow the industry has managed well though there are so many hiccups uh, early hiccups the industry has managed well but the transportation of uh, wet crops and raw seed definitely it could not be done as per uh, schedule because seed parenting harvesting some of you know the farmers due to panicness or availability of the labor they have taken their own decision instead of you know waiting for the instruction from the r nation it it is so uh, relevant to wet crop harvesting normally is wet crop harvesting there will be a permission given by respective seed companies to the farmers for harvesting uh, this year in you know, the many of the cases in you know, the farmers uh, based on the availability of the labor or panic situation you know they have harvested on their own and uh, it has really created pressure on uh, uh, wet crop transportation and the time lag also very crucial for uh, wet crops and that will in turn uh, will have a long term implication on seed quality so up to 6 months there may not be problem because dispatch of wet crops if it is not done uh, immediately within 24 hours to the crop drying units that will have a serious implication on long term storage next yeah next next uh, yeah if you uh, yeah go back go back yeah 
the wet cops uh, the schedule got affected as a result so in some situations you know the cop drying which is supposed to be at a low moisture level uh, around uh, 10 10.5% okay sometimes you know the com some companies have gone for 11 11.5% which is a very uh, less than a, a prescribed moisture content but sometimes you know it will have a serious implication on the long term storage as well as the shelling quality of the seed so as a result you know sometimes you have to follow certain things and such situations the companies have opted for seed drying which is normally very optional in uh, most of the cases but this year the seed drying has become uh, one of the key activity in the industry so unloading and weighment has affected very badly at uh, processing plants due to the migrant labor you know leaving uh, hyderabad and especially major processing activity in and around hyderabad so that is uh, addressed of course that was addressed at a later stage but initial stages yes unloading got affected it has put lot of pressure on uh, the seed processing plant yes next sampling it has not affected but the dispatch of samples to remote locations because many of the companies have operations in one area and the quality lab in different places so in such cases the transportation of samples got affected uh, very badly so as a result you know the uh, the results communication will be affected and it will have a impact on whole chain supply chain Uh, packing and it comes to packing you know the uh, majority of the packing you know uh, despite of uh, initial hiccups i think we should appreciate the, our industry they have shown a resilience and uh, the managed uh, the packing and processing you know at least to the 70 to 75% of the capacity if not 100% capacity so that itself under a given situation and condi given conditions in it's a great achievement and of course uh, to the extent of 20 25% you know uh, the plants to got affected so the dispatch of the seed yes there is a lot of pressure on unloading and loading at the processing plants as a result you know the truck waiting period uh, which is normally you know the same day the truck has to leave the plant in some cases i think the trucks have uh, stayed in the plant for more than a day or so next so uh, at a nutshell if you look at uh, the uh, we call it actually manufacturing uh, other word of manufacturing is supply chain it is a linked link linked exercise between uh, r&d then parents parent seed then see, hybrid seed production then seed processing and of course the quality assurance all around the uh, uh, places so there are two things which are very very key to success under this uh, circumstances one is right alignment linkage uh, right linkage and right alignment is very very important uh, the information flow has to be perfect the second point is uh, transparency in communication that you know everywhere uh, the, there has to be transparency in communication and communication has to be at uh, very very effective to get a success of this and uh, thank you thank you arsh for giving opportunity and i think we will take questions and answer at later the yes mr rao i would also just uh, you know thank you so much for sharing your views i think it was it was quite interesting to understand the entire uh, you know journey from the breeding till the actual processing bit of it a, a very quick point if uh, you know satish or mr gupta wanted to add anything in this in this is in this journey from the breeding to processing any points that you want to add before we move on to the next uh, you know uh, part of this discussion anything that you want to add over and above uh, satish you will have to unmute yourself sorry yeah uh, i think he's covered most of it so i don't have much to add brilliant good so uh, what i am going to do mr rao is uh, just put up so i think you can see these questions Uh, or do i read this out for you so in the q and a so i'll read this out for you so yeah. we have a question from mr vasudev rao 
where yeah. he's saying we see risk with respect to GP of some crops, particularly okay. hybrid seed production, yeah. as pollinations and roguing were not personally monitored. Hmm. Will it probably have some quality risk in this regard? Yeah, no, definitely. I think, you know, uh, we, are, we have observed in uh, certain uh, crops, even at our end. So the remedy to that, uh, nowadays, you know, the electrophoresis uh, is more or less established for many of the crops. So the GOD will take time. Grow test will take definitely a time, two, three months time. So better to subject through electrophoresis and so that you know you will get a fair idea of uh, quality. It is not; it gives uh, a good, uh, um, I mean, assessment of quality of uh, each and every lot. It is better in such cases, you know, wherever you have got doubts about the quality, better to subject through electrophoresis and get the results in two days' time and dispatch the material. Good. And one more question, I think, Mr. Rao, uh, you know, Vasudev had was. Uh, I don't know uh, if this is uh, something that you can answer at this point in time, but he yeah. was he wants to understand that were we able to adequately implement the COVID-19 guidelines to break the chain of transmission during the drying and processing stages in the various units? Do, would you have a view on that at this point in time? Uh, seed processing units? <laughs> Uh, seed processing units are country in general. Okay, I think you know he has he has, he wants to know about seed processing. He yeah. himself will be the best judge because he 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 is a very experienced person with you know a lot of background of QHSC in many companies. I think you know the, the, see idea is you know it is a seasonal industry, so we try to the, implement and then adhere to the uh, the, uh, safety guidelines uh, to the maximum extent. But of course, you know, the problem is here, it is at uh, different levels, different levels, you know. See, farmer, every farmer field is a, our, our unit, okay. You got so many farmers, so many processing plants, so many dispatch points, so many uh, activity uh, areas. So, so monitoring was a bit difficult, but you know, wherever there is a possible, at least at the processing plants, to the to best of my knowledge, the people have implemented very strictly. Got it. Got it. Uh, fair. Okay. Uh, thank you so much. In the paucity of time, I think we will have to now very quickly move on uh, and uh, you know work with what uh, Mr. Satish now has to present. I think the topic that uh, Mr. Satish would be presenting on is the entire distribution side of things, which is post-processing and breeding. How does this entire value chain effect in terms of actual material going out in the market and you know trying to reach and and what are the various things that we are trying to do? Uh, we will, I'm, we, you know, we have, uh, you know, Mr. Satish. I'll just take a minute to put up your presentation i'm i'm trying to you know there is some youtube link that we are trying to work on if you can start i will i will put that up uh, will it be it will be a 30 second buffer will that work for you so if you can start and i'll just put yeah. up the presentation sure all right good thank you yeah anyway i think uh, i'd like to thank uh, ramna rao and also for o4s for organizing this uh, so Till my presentation comes up to answer to the question, I think the industry did a quite a good job in terms of managing the the whole COVID-19 distancing, I would say, because there's not been uh, any incident except for which I know of that very recently something happened. But, uh, you know, that was at the fag end of our season. So overall, I would say that the industry did take a lot of effort to uh, follow the regulations which were given and the guidelines which were followed, actually. Sure. I am just, I will just put up the presentation. Yeah. No problem. I'll wait for that. So as Ramana Rao has already taken uh, the 
production and the processing part of it. So after the packing is done, so I'll take this bit of what happens after that. And Sanjay is going to take it, uh, the last bit of it, the front end part of it. So I'll just focus on the distribution. Uh, so can we go to the next slide, please? Uh, so typically in our industry, which is the seed uh, supply, so the way the distribution channel is based is uh, obviously once we do the packing in the plant, it goes to the CNF, uh, which is typically is in one of one in particular state or it could be more than one in a bigger state. Then from the CNF, it goes to the distributor and from the distributors goes to retailer, then finally it reaches to the farmer. Uh, so typically this is would be like, I would say 95% of how the material would flow. Yes, there are multiple, sometimes uh, there is a sub retailer uh, in few markets. Uh, there are cases where, you know, we directly dispatch from the plant to the distributors. But I would say that those are exceptions which are there. Uh, typically in India, I would say it's a two tire distribution setup where it first goes to the distributor, then goes to the retailer and farmer uh, interfaces all typically with the retailer. Sometimes the distributor is also a distributor come retailer. Uh, some are exclusive distributors, so you could classify uh, them in terms of you know some who are exclusive and some are you know do both uh, distribution as well as retailing. Uh, but broadly speaking, I would say that you know our distribution would be divided into this sort of a network. That is the way the distribution channel is uh, actually set up. But uh, what actually moves in this whole channel is something. One is obviously the physical aspect of it, which is the product which is the primarily what all of us move, which is our finished good seeds, uh, which basically moves from the plant to CNF, then further on goes on. Uh, but I, we should also look at what other things actually moves in this whole distribution. There's a lot of documents which moves from, you know, from the company right up to the distributors and from the distributor, the retailers, from the farmers. So the type of documents which moves from companies to the distributors are the bill of supply, which is a hard copy. Then there are credit notes, there's statement of accounts, so there's a significant amount of hard copies which moves from you know the companies to the distributor and from probably the distributor retailer and retailer gives a in many cases they don't give sometimes they give a bill and most time they don't give a bill so these are some documents which moves actually then within the distribution i think other than the products and documents we also have a lot of information which moves actually from all the way from the company to the farmer and it could uh, bypass one of those few channels and directly go into you know the next channel which is there. So, and I'll come to a little more details of what is this information all about. This could be about uh, pricing, it could be about product knowledge, it could be uh, schemes which are going. So any sort of information which is there flows through this whole thing. And as uh, industry has been an extremely, I would say traditional industry, and I would say there's a significant amount of human touch into this entire interface which is there. And uh, I would dwell upon, you know, this whole thing about COVID, how would that impact? Uh, because we employ a lot of people in terms of both full-time employees plus a lot of temporary people uh, within this whole distribution channel uh, to do a lot of things. Either they would be passing the documents or passing information or collecting information or ensuring that the product flow is uh, going perfectly. So this is how it goes from left to right. But from right to left also, there are a few things which happens. One, obviously, our industry is very unique in the manner that you know we also have a significant amount of sales return which happens so this is very unique to seed industry which doesn't happen to a lot of other industries so we have most of our sale is actually consignment and we could have returns anywhere between you know 10 percent to it might in a bad year it could go to 30 35 percent also a significant amount of return which comes it all the way gets collected from retailers to distributor it comes to our cnf and back to the plant and there is a significant risk most of us actually bear on this uh, returns. Obviously, when the product goes, the money comes back right from the farmer, retailer, distributor, from distributor directly comes to the company. So how does that flow? And feedback. Feedback is in terms of product performance. It could be, you know, about uh, the other feedback. We really run a lot in terms of knowing where our product is, how much has actually gone to different stages. So that has always been a big challenge in our industry in terms of knowing what we have visibility is in terms of, we know how much has been packed we know how much has been dispatched we have a cnf report which is comes in so we will clearly know how much is there and how much has gone to the distributor after that it becomes quite um, you know blurred in terms of how much is the distributor holding then how much is the retailer holding from retailer how much has gone to the farmer so each company has its own mechanism of trying to find out what is, what is the level of inventory at 
different uh, you know uh, stages which are there so that the feedback mechanism is another thing which comes back to us as knowing okay how much is lying at different places one is that in terms of product and also feedback about generally about product performance so that's how the distribution channel is set up this is what goes from left to right this is what comes back from right to left uh, so let me spend a bit of time on the next slide uh, arsh if you can move of what has been the practice in this distribution channel and what are the possible changes because of covid 19 uh, so primarily at the distribution network which is there uh, i do not see that you know a significant amount of changes are going to come that one of the layer would actually be redundant uh, i think we'll have to live with it but there are innovations which are happening people are starting to skip one uh, channel directly move into retailers some retailers themselves becoming you know distributors directly with a better infrastructure information system that has been a but uh, given the complexity of our country and given the uh, the size which is there i think this will be a gradual process some of the companies are also now looking into online distribution through many marketplaces which are there directly to the farmers so surely i think those are things which will happen but this traditional channel i think is there for some time to happen in terms of you know this whole two tier distribution channel is there to to be there but what changes could happen is in the other flow which is there so one is in terms of the product flow which is the onward uh, flow which is from the company to right up to the retailer and farmer uh, so currently what we are seeing is you know a significant change in the trucking uh, business in the country uh, what is happening the ownership of uh, these truckers is changing towards a higher payload because the cost of operation is nearly the same as a smaller truck to a bigger truck so for long hauling it is becoming quite apparent that you don't get smaller trucks so you need to really plan for a bigger truck so earlier it was like we used to say 10 tons and it became 15 tons now for a long haul it is all about 28 tons and you know above so that's a big change which has happened so for long haul that is what is going to happen from there on from a cnf obviously there is a challenge to break it into smaller and that's what is going to happen so for our interstate movements long haul is what is going to happen also i think the entire logistics in our industry is very unorganized these are still small time operators there is enough and more room which i feel that there is this uh, whole sector can actually be you know more organized than what uh, an organized freight provider who is more efficient and and can bring in a lot of efficiency in the whole freighting part of it that's on the onward product movement on the return product movement i think as i was saying earlier we as an industry have a significant amount of risk both in terms of quantum and that is in terms of percentage return also in terms of timing like the season is over sometime we get returns after 4 months 5 months so by the time the product itself would have gone bad so by a lot of innovations i definitely feel that returns as a process can actually be down uh, both in terms of but and as a company i think now i think we can't afford to have such sort of a working capital to block into inventory so those are things which i feel i think will make a change in the product returns in terms of documents uh, uh, there are a lot of physical documents as i was saying the bill of supply the credit note statement account which moves in uh, so clearly i think you know this is something at least at the distributor level we think this is going to change a uh, lot of it would actually go into online statements uh with better uh, uh you know facility of computers and internet at a distributor i think uh, it's time is right for them to actually stop receiving a lot of physical documents but to receive online statement just like we all receive from our bankers actually in terms of information as i said the pricing product schemes uh, we print a lot of things we go and tell them uh, but these two months have helped us to know that okay without that also we can actually you know uh, send in a lot of information to different parts of the channel uh, so i think it would move on to a lot into digital plus also the access to information which was limited to few i think now because of this uh, two months experience i think people understand there's more to source of information uh so the whole online service providers have done and retailers who was the key i would still believe that he will be a key but i think farmers are going to receive information from a more than one source and there will be more influencers than what they were earlier so information is become, going to become a little more um, free and is going to be more uh, for the all the intermediaries to get and it will be much faster 
So in terms of the money part of it, uh, partly I think existing system is about, uh, we from a company, I think most of us have moved to online uh, transfers, but distributors still gets a lot of it from checks and there's also a lot of cash which still flows in the system. Uh, the demonetization triggered a bit of change, but I think this two months will also help that people just can't keep moving around collecting cash. So I think a lot of it would actually move on to uh, online system in terms of the collection. The last bit change in the, uh, in the flow is in terms of feedback. As I said, one big challenge which we have, what we call is liquidation. Uh, we just would not know what is happening in the entire channel. I think there's a significant uh, efficiency can be brought in in terms of technology uh, innovation, in terms of knowing where the product is at different stages. I think today the scale is a possibility. I think technology, there are a lot of innovations which are there, which can possibly end uh, at the cost, which is appropriate. I think that is what is important. I think from liquidation plus product performance, I think uh, we need not have to actually depend a lot on our physical visit to understand what is happening. Uh, so these are few possible changes. I think it's a matter of time, how long it's going to But I think these two months have helped us. Three has been one of the very traditional industry which we've been doing things uh, like for many years, and we felt that things are not going to change. But I think these two months have helped us to realize that, that yeah, there is a different ways to do it. And as uh, as uh, leaders, I think we can definitely look forward to some of the changes which can happen because of this. And these are few thoughts I thought the whole distribution channel can actually uh, be revamped and changed uh, going forward. So those are a few of my thoughts. And uh, so if any questions, I'll take it now or a little later and I'll pass this to Arsh and Sanjay. Uh, sure. Uh, thank you so much, uh, Satish. Thank you for sharing your views. Uh, I think what we will try and do is since we've got a lot of questions now, uh, maybe we'll move into uh, uh, Mr. Gupta's session finish that and take questions uh, overall because we, we've kept 10 minutes in the end because it's it, the questions that are now coming are mixed bag. So, you know, there is a lot of uh, digitization, processing, distribution, kind of getting mixed together. So we'll, we'll take them up uh, post, uh, I think, once we go to Mr. Uh, Gupta's session. But in the meantime, uh, Mr. Rao uh, and SK, sir, if you wanted your views, I just wanted your quick take on, on the distribution side of things, adding to what you know, Satish has just explained. If you if you can chip in and 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 your quick views on this, uh, you know, this point in time. No, uh, I would like to add is that Satish has given a very good context for my presentation at least. So he has done all the heavy lifting in terms of explaining the agree uh, value chain. So I'm sure I I think I don't have to add anything. It is very comprehensive. I think he has covered more or less uh, everything, nothing to add. Got it. So, yeah. uh, you know, I think, uh, and as, as uh, Satish rightly said, from a distribution standpoint, I think it is very, very critical that uh, now since we, we keep talking about distribution uh, supply chains and we keep talking about the value that distribution supply chains can add. So I think it is, it will be now all the more critical for a lot of organizations to start really looking at their distribution side of things to figure out how things are moving, to figure out how this entire, uh, you know, uh, visibility as, as, you know, Satish explained in terms of the product view, in terms of the product flow and in terms of the uh, information flow, how do we manage that and at, and at, at every node, how are these things trying to really connect back? Because uh, at some point in time, I think one of the things that Satish was trying to establish was, uh, and this is what even we've seen with limited view of the industry that we have, that maybe there is a little bit of understanding that the organizations have on uh, the product flow in the distribution side of things, but the information flow that is happening both downstream as well as upstream uh, becomes a bigger challenge for organizations and in the in the paucity or in the challenge of not having that information at the right time uh, a lot of decisions related to product 
uh, are taken which might not really be indicative of what is happening on the ground so i think very fairly put satish that you know there are areas and as you said as you know um, sk also said uh, it's it's setting up us us up for the remainder part of the discussion where we we'll look at digitization and digitalization and also one of the important aspects that uh, 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 sk would now pick up which is the entire engagement bit of it with the larger segment so i'll quickly move on to uh, you know sk and i'll i'll, I'll just put up uh, your presentation and then i'll hand it over to you uh, so just give me a second okay over to you sk uh, first of all good morning uh, to all the participants and uh, the co panelists and as well as o4s arsh for organizing this so what i want to discuss discuss with you today is share my thoughts on engagement opportunities in agri supply chains agri supply chains has already been ex explained by satish so i will not go uh, on that explaining it again but where the where where satish began and where ramna ended on the ramna side also there are a lot of engagement opportunities because in seeds the production also happens at the farmer level and in a way they are also our customers but i for this uh, presentation i am going to limit myself only to the right side of the distribution chain or the downstream part of the supply chain so ash can you move to the next yeah so first of all i am going to lay the context why engagement why at all we need to do engagement with the customers so what are we looking for when we talk about uh, engagement so these are three four things which come in now come into my mind i'm sure there are many other issues many other objectives which we are trying to seek by uh, doing engagement with our customers first of all is word of mouth so all of us are looking for a word of mouth why word of mouth because the research secondary data shows shows that it is five times more impactful than the print media so if you print an ad and if there is a word of mouth word of mouth tends to be more effective than or more uh, impression making compared to the print media 13% of the transactions in the world or in the say business space happens through word of mouth so if you take the example of seeds industry per se say let's say 4 billion dollars or 5 billion dollars so 13% would mean about 500 million dollars worth of transactions are happening just because of word of mouth then brand strengthening brand strengthening every company aspires every brand aspires that they want to be uh, strong why brand uh, strengthening is important pricing power uh, even if you assume that the cost of production is same the better brand gives you an opportunity to charge more price which gives you a better profitability better margin strong brands also lead to higher sales that is known to all another is uh, loyalty loyalty or oblique retention i'm using this terms interchangeably see it is said that 5% increase in retention leads to 25% increase in profits and what i mean by retention in the sense it is a uh, very well researched and uh, in concluded that over a period of 5% typically farm brands lose about 50% of the customers and to regain them to get new customers is a very costly proposition so if you are able to arrest the slide of losing or arrest the rate of losing of your customers even by 5% it will have a 25% in positive impact on your bottom line so this is very very important increase sales of course everybody does in get engaged does in engagement activities to increase sales but the bottom line bottom line of engagement should be we have to know our customer better we should be knowing our customer better we should be able to understand him better we should be able to understand him what drives his behavior so most of the engagement activities are ultimately aimed at understanding your consumers better or customers better ash please next one now uh, i am limiting my discussion mostly to agri import and specifically seed sector so this of some of this will be applicable to agri chem also but is very very specific to very specific to the seed sector so most of the time the satish also mentioned that it is a very traditional industry and we have been using traditional approaches for engagement so what are those traditional like, um, uh, approaches so traditional approaches is basically say build uh, engagement opportunities so whenever we do any customer program any outreach anything marketing we try to build uh, engagement opportunities and what are the traditional ways of building uh, 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 engagement opportunities is of course customer meetings channel meetings your distributors meetings uh, dealer meetings they are a very effective way because in our industry we see we believe that seeing is believing so 
we 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 would like to invite the farmers to come and have a look at the performance on our on our of our crop when it's standing in the field so but the only challenge here comes in is most of the time you will see it ends up being a one way dialogue in the sense the person calls a meeting number of farmers assemble at the field the person talks about the crop performance and never get really get, gets a chance as to how the message has gone and how it has been perceived by the customer because there are no feedback opportunities hardly one or two people may say something or you may have other options to get feedback but those are not very efficient or not very effective then you also have marketing and sales campaigns then uh, this is typically before the onset of the seasons you will have multiple com campaigns you will have multiple marketing initiatives where you will talk about more uh, about your promotional schemes about your availability in in fact i should mention that the customer meeting aspect the first point i mentioned is mostly product centric it is mostly about showcasing the strength of your product or the capabilities of your product whereas the other with the other part marketing and sales campaigns talk about the other piece of your promotional mix marketing mix and there is so, some amount of feedback here opportunity here even though it may be totally misleading sometimes there is advance booking so you run a campaign you do at, at the farmer level and then you judge the effectiveness of that campaign by seeing how much advance booking you have been able to generate from the farmers and similarly at the trade also at the retailer level also distributor level also you run a campaign you do work in the field and then you try to judge the impact of those efforts you have taken by the amount of advance bookings you have been able to collect but mind you uh, there lays a trap because sometimes your advance booking as a financial option may be more attractive than any other option your distributor may have so you he may have no in the real intentions of investing in your product he is investing it in the scheme purely because of economic opportunities it offers then we also have loyalty schemes now many companies are using app or digital media for run the, running this all loyalty schemes but these loyalty schemes are typically aimed at the retailers as of now given the scale given the complexity no company i suppose as of now has been able to reach out then to the end customer or the consumer for uh, running a loyalty scheme the loyalty schemes uh, if the com if the uh, company is not on the digital platform can be instant gratification in the sense that you buy this much and you get this much incentive on the spot you get this much discount you get a free incentive trip or you get a gift whatever or it can be a long drawn kind of a incentive trap and loyalty program where the points can be accumulated over a period of time and can be redeemed later when the as and when the dealer sees fit but depends and as to what are you what is your aim and what are you trying to do whether you are going to engage the channel on a long term basis or you are looking at instant sales and then moving on you also some companies have also done this uh, fairly well this is a champion farmers so you have a set of champion farmers or brand ambassadors or your product ambassadors in the field with whom trials are done and then this effort is aimed at mostly generating word of mouth then you expect these farmers who are your brand champions will create sufficient amount of word of mouth which will have a positive impact on the sales in the in immediate vicinity of those champion farmers then other companies other engagement activities most of the companies have is this is also now mandated by the government is helpline you have consumer helpline customer helpline uh, with where the farmer can call up and if they if at all they want any information or they have any problem so this is the way and you you have an opportunity with them to engage with them interact with them and help them improve their customer experience but as you would notice in all this traditional expense uh, traditional approaches all these are highly manpower intensive approaches all of these require uh, manpower as ash rightly mentioned that we have 50% of our population is dependent on agriculture and if you assume that uh, there are about uh, 14 to 15 crore farmers so you can imagine if you have to address each of them what is the kind of manpower requirement uh, you will have you will probably raise, uh, need to raise an army to be able to have any meaningful dialogue with them in the traditional approach ash can i have the next slide please so what are the limitations as i have already mentioned first of all is highly manpower intensive it is very expensive it is low productivity the you can uh, the productivity is tends to be very low you are the farms are scattered the landing the land holdings are very very small so even if you are able to collect say 50 farmers for a meeting you are probably addressing 50 acres or something which is insignificant given the total arable area of 114 million hectares in this country there are no feedback or engagement opportunities even though companies have come up with many initiatives like you have a missed call concept 
or you have feedback forms right after the meeting somebody calls up and uh, gets the feedback but those are very sporadic and very very uh, say i would say not very efficient and they are very very prone to biases see you just imagine somebody in the field doing a meeting and then also collecting the feedback how much how much enthusiasm it will require for, on his part to collect uh, feedback from all so it tends to be biased it will have biases built in because of his own uh, understanding of the market so and then we in the absence of any meaningful consumer uh, feedback or engagement sometimes we tend to rely too much on intermediaries intermediaries in this i mean the trade partners the retailers the distributors so they we use their their feedback as a surrogate for understanding the likely consumer behavior in the coming season but please understand one thing that most of these intermediaries their business objectives are maybe totally different from yours and their business objective maximization may result on a process called of in information asymmetry so they will always have more information about the product the customers the likely demand the product performance than either the company and the customer and it is up to entirely up to them how to play it to maximize their end result so we need to be cautious when we are taking feedback from the intermediaries another thing what happens is so you know agriculture is highly seasonal very very seasonal so most of the crops you get opportunity to get to know the crop get to know the customer get to know the performance only once a year so the data points collected are just too few so on couple of that because of the high manpower intensity you can employ only a finite number of people so finite number of people finite number of customers whom you engage with just imagine ki what kind of data points uh, you will get and this data points uh, this number of data should by points you will not be enough for you to make any meaningful uh, uh, conclusion because the size of the sample itself will be always suspect and on top of that quality of data because of the way you have collected is also a suspect so which makes this exercise more or less a very suspect thing so please move on to the next one then so this is the way this industry has been working what now then covid 19 happens all of a sudden on uh, and on 22nd 24th of march the lockdown is initiated now we see that all the traditional opportunities engagement opportunities which the companies have been using for the past so many years in the industry suddenly vanish barring a few there are a few companies obviously they have they have digital means to reach out to their customers but those are exceptions rather than the rule so they are then suddenly all these opportunities vanish now most of the companies i'm sure my friends will bear me out who are in the industry are more or less playing blind see as of now their uh, the offices are not working people are not coming people are not been able to go to the farm uh, farmers field people are not able to visit the retailer the retailers have not been able to visit their the distributors have not been able to visit their retailer the retailers have not been able to contact villagers so it's totally blind and as satish mentioned now we have placed the material as it is in a normal circumstances it is very difficult to get a feedback as how much has been sold and how much going to come how much is going to come back today in the under current situation this situation has been exacerbated by a multiple of uh, the problem we have faced in the past so we are being totally uh, blind in the uh, blind situation after having placed the material and we can make we are likely to get very wrong and biased feedback so this is another pitfall of the current situation if we depend too much on the traditional approaches of reaching out or having engagement activities in in fact most of the company during this season when because the selling window is too just too small most of the time it is 15 20 days and if you are lucky even a, a, a month at most that the companies establish a war room to do any whatever so little opportunities are there for midway course correction but those opportunities are totally gone because the offices are not working even though you have a call center the people are not allowed to come in then how do you get the feedback so this is becoming a big big issue and now i think this even though this pause has been imposed on us it is not by our own volition this has been imposed by on us by the covid but this gives us a right time to think about that how do we want the future to be how do we want to be seen as operating in the future because this is just imagine i don't want to uh, uh, sound paranoid but just imagine this is covid 19 maybe a covid 20 can happen covid 21 can happen so then what are we going to do to ensure that all these problems what we are facing will not fa face in the next time it happens or probably this has also given us a chance to question our old models business models which we are very very risk averse to question because 
there's a particular way we employ a lot of people. We employ 500 people in the field, imagining, hoping that this leads to increase in sales. But there is no uh, correct way to validate those findings, whether those whatever we have been doing in the past has been giving us a the result. There are very few, few ways of measuring the ROI on all the money being spent. But this, this year has given us a great opportunity. And I'm sure this will come out. Okay, whatever digital or alternative, digital uh, initiatives the companies have taken, they are going to emerge much, much better from this pandemic or from, uh, compared to the one which, which are relied totally on the traditional methods. Uh, next slide, please. So now, uh, why there's a why we are, this industry has been so much traditional in the past? There are a lot of things, a lot of uh, issues have been there, which has resulted in this traditional approach lasting for so long. But now the things are changing. There are a lot of enabling environment. I've given just example. Just imagine in India, we have a population of say 130 crores. We have 150 crore devices which are internet ready already in the market, and they are likely to become 100. And Oh, sorry, 210 crores by 2023. And mind you, by 2023, our population will be just 152 crores. So there will be 50% more devices than the number of people in this country. And now most of the devices have vernacular capabilities. So earlier, it was not the case in four or five years back when most of the handsets could not support any other language than English. So it was very difficult to reach out to the rural customer, but that's not the case any longer. Most of the, uh, the devices uh, support vernacular languages. Network is omnip omnipresent and affordable in India, as you know, has probably one of the lowest rates in for data connectivity in the world. As of now, there are 30 crore regular internet users in rural India. This number is mind boggling, 30 crore rural uh, internet users in rural India. There, and it is growing at seven times the rate of our population growth. So if we are growing at say 1.7%, it is growing at 9% per annum, which is a staggering number. Another thing is social media and uh, acceptance and present. We, we believe that social media is a very, very urban centric phenomenon, not any longer, just look at the number. There are 40 crore people in this country who access social media on a regular basis. So let's take a number, let's say 30%, 20%, 40% of these are in rural areas. So just imagine, we are talking about, even if we assume 25%, we're talking about 25 crores rural people who are accessing the social media regularly. So it also opens us a challenge for, for us, sorry, channel for us to engage with our customers better. Then increasing number of websites. So earlier, if you look at it, there are about 30 lakh websites in India currently, 30 lakh. And this is growing at 9%. So now more and more people are also accessing websites for their information needs. They are not dependent on people. They are not dependent on other modes of getting information. So this is also growing. This is also presents an opportunity to engage with your customers in a much, much more meaningful way. Next. So what should be the way forward? So now, as of now, as I said, the environment is right for digitalization of consumer engagement initiatives. Now, every company will have to decide what is the way forward they want to uh, do. So there are some of the questions you can ask yourself, you can ask your team, and based on that, a digital strategy can, a digital engagement strategy can be formulated. So what is your business objective? A very, uh, very generic questions. Who is your customer? See, this uh, sometimes this looks very easy, but this is also one of the typical questions. And the moment you embark on a digital journey, it will also help you understand that who's really your customer. Some of the mental models we have of our customers may, may turn out to be wrong as we go along this journey and analyze data and come to a conclusion as to who our customer really is. And what drives our customer's engagement? As of now, again, very traditional approach, we think uh, post farmer show, post uh, crop show, we have to show, bring to the farmer to the field, we have to do this, we have to run a scheme, we have to run a Jeep campaign. But those questions, uh, those uh, things can be really questioned in the situation if you latch onto this digital bandwagon. Develop an engagement model. So then uh, if you have a customer in mind, you know what is your business model, what are you looking at, you know what your customer is, then you can easily develop a uh, engagement model which will work effectively. And then iterate and fine tune, iterate and fine tune. This is a never ending cycle. This will probably help us achieve our objectives. And all of, and in the end, I would say all of the above is possible only through a concerted distance strategy. So that's it, friends. Thank you so much for your patience. That's, that's all I had to share. And, and I'll be happy to take any questions.
thank you, sir. Uh, thank you for sharing uh, your opinion on the engagement bit of it. I, I think, uh, you know, first of all, I would like to thank uh, uh, all, all of the panelists. So, Mr. Rao, Mr. Satish, and Mr. Gupta. Uh, I think uh, one of the things that we've kind of uh, established, and I know we, 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 we had budgeted one hour for this, so I would want to still spend about five, seven minutes on taking questions. But uh, I think my takeaway, uh, very simply put, is uh, from the point of view of the entire uh, supply chain side of things, I think what we've started to realize is traditionally, we've been very, very, uh, uh, you know, driven on experience. We knew how things happen. We were driven by people. We knew people, if we put people at the right places, uh, you know, things would flow. What possibly, uh, one of the takeaways that I have from all, all the, you, you know, the panelists is, at some point in time, there is a requirement for us to now start to think at how we will start to change, maybe evolve to get to, say, better processes, uh, rather than having, you know, with having better people, can we also drive systems? Can we put in the right channels where right from breeding, processing, distribution and engagement, can we have a unified view? Because I think one of the things that I, and why we broke it down also is because industries look at it as standalone uh, solution. And this is a discussion Mr. Rao and we were also having yesterday that when companies look at it, they say, when we, you know, we have an ERP in place. So we are, we are sorted. You know, everything is taken care of. But I think it's not just the processing bit of it or the manufacturing or the, or, or the breeding bit of it or the distribution bit of it or the engagement bit of it in pieces. It is one value chain. It is one entire view that an organization needs to look at. And at every stage, how do we build in capacity? Whether it is capacity of people, whether it is capacity of, of technology, processes, and how all of this links together to get information back to us. Because one of the points that you know Satish mentioned was there is flow of products this way and there is information flow this way, right? Back, back in the value chain. So how do we make that possible? Uh, is you know one of the things that I I have taken out other than all the other important you know points that were mentioned. So what I'm going to do is very quickly uh, you know spend five minutes on the digitization bit of it because we would want to close this by by also bringing in your views, all three of you's views on the digitalization and digitization bit, and then quickly take questions. Uh, so very quickly, uh, you know, Mr. Rao, if you have to identify three things today that the sector needs to do uh, from a digitalization standpoint, not really putting in an ERP because that is essential to take care of the internal workings of things. But in the overall things, what would your top three suggestions be? What is it that the sector needs to do? Three things, your view, sir. No, uh, like, you know, the, my view is like uh, the industry the ERP, unfortunately, it captures the accounts or transactions at a different levels. So it will not give any sort of, you know, uh, support to management decisions. So what we need to have is uh, right from uh, the budgeting, right from budgeting, you know, looking at the previous year trends, trends, when I say trends, sales trend, cost of goods trend and expenses trend. So we need to take the integrated approach, you know, of uh, complete uh, capturing of the information from uh, uh, different levels across the organization. Uh, that will be the beginning of digitalization. Then uh, what we are uh, connecting, you know, till the dispatches we are connecting with the ERP. Okay, the entire information flow is there. So what is happening, once we deliver the seed to the customer, so we are totally disconnected with the customer. So, so from there, you know, that the customer service and feedback and compliance is going to be very, very crucial. I think, you know, we can integrate uh, uh, customer you know, services or uh, compliance, feedback, whatever it, you call, uh, so that, you know, we can satisfy the customer better way because you are giving a good product and you are reaching to the farmer 
and afterwards you know you don't know what is happening at the field level correct so that that is a major link so like one uh, at a budgeting and planning part we need to uh, focus on distillation the second after sales we need to have a focus on customer handling uh, customer complaints customer feedback customer service whatever you call okay then third and the foremost is the integration of the whole activity within the organization okay yeah. so like r and d the they, are, they work in isolation they they, they have their own uh, systems majority majority of the companies the erp is not connected with r and d so so r and d is uh, beyond uh, uh, erp so like you know you, you need to have like the r and d is the no, r and d is the starting point for you know Deliver, de- delivering and the product for customer uh, satisfaction correct so so you need to have integrating uh, integrated approach these are sure. the three areas sure thank good thank you mr rao thank you so much satish i would want to quickly jump to you uh, your quick takeaways three things that you would want the industry to ideally do at this point in time from a digitalization standpoint uh, sure so as i said it's a very traditional industry free but i think today it's possible because one is uh, earlier everybody thought that you know every we ourselves have to do it but today i think there are uh, enough and more uh, you know innovations and service providers and, and at a cost which is appropriate i think it is possible for smaller companies to also adopt so i think scale is not really a constraint today which was earlier so to that extent i think this is an appropriate time for us to look at it to me the three things which i feel is going to be appropriately i think would be where the intervention clearly could come uh, one is in terms of the whole tracking the product flow so as i said our visibility is only up to the distributor i think that visibility if it comes from the distributor to the retailer and if it can happen up the farmer that would be fantastic but i think the first step is to really get a visibility up to the retailer i think that would help us to track our products but it would also help us to reduce our return that's one part of it which i think that the other one which i think is in terms of our visibility on sales of the retailer is not there so we only know how much the distributor is sold i think what we should understand from the industry is you know the farmer interfaces with the retailer the retailer is a key guy distributor is not the key guy actually right. so when we spend more time with the distributor and not with the retailer right. and to get the retailer information in terms of what he is sold is very difficult because they don't share it so if technology can actually help us to track how much sales each retailer has done i think it would really really give us a lot of insights about what next okay. the other thing is in terms of a lot of data is generated but i think analytics is one thing which i definitely think this industry has to go a long way to really look at what these all data can actually be used for uh, for good decision making a uh, farmer engagement is the last one and i know it is a very very complex one given the size of the farm holdings and the transaction size which we have but if a cost effective mechanism can be done there i would be very happy to do it but i think we should take step by step first is the retailer uh, product flow uh, retailer sales and then some bit of analytics i think that is we are, i think we are right and today i think there is more openness to accept that in our industry and i think uh, as i said earlier i think this is a appropriate time for us to adopt few of these things good good thank you so much satish so what i now do is I, i so i was reading through the questions also so i'm, I'm going to uh, you know club a few a few of them together and put it out in the open so that we are trying to answer a lot of these so the first one is uh, you know there is there is the challenge evident challenge of labor that is that is there and is going to stay at least for the next few quarters for the you know the sector and this sector specifically is dependent on labor it's a very labor intensive uh, you know sector so how in the short term and the long term is the sector going to manage this uh, is it technology process limiting operations what's 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 the way forward um, any one of you can take that i'll, I'll put it out in the open see uh, see what will see what happens in our industry is uh, as of now as you know it's a highly seasonal industry so the capacity you put up theoretical actually is different from the actual uses point of view so most of the people have shied away from making capital investment because they think this is not worth their while in the sense the returns on the capital expense but now this model is going this that's going to change because a lot of companies would realize this time the dependence their labor dependence has to come down so i am sure a lot of technological uh, uh sorry capex would be in case of people will work on capacities another thing what has happened in our industry is as of now we have seen emergence of specialized 
service providers for in terms of manufacturing or processing as we call see most of earlier most of the companies had their own processing plant so we would see large very large processing businesses to come up to ensure that they have the efficiencies of scale they have the, the, the so the companies are not required to make large capital expenses so i see these two three changes will happen going forward uh, satish or mr rao you wanted to add something on this yeah i think i agree with uh, sanjay and also that you know it's a myth that we have so much big population but the cost of labor has actually been going up and up right. and uh, earlier many of these uh, uh, automation if you do a cost benefit analysis it would have been difficult for us to justify the investment but today with the labor cost going up plus the availability which is going to happen i think many of those uh, automations or some of these things which we can actually then you can really see a return on investment on those and that would trigger a bit of a change in the way uh, investments are done to reduce our dependence on labor got it got it and i think one or two questions were all all around the emergence of e-commerce uh, you know or the entire value of door doorstep delivery uh, which is where you know the farmer engagement bit came into picture so i think uh, one notion or myth uh, that a lot of industry has and possibly i would want all three of you's views is the industry I, the people that i've interacted with feel the farmer is not technology savvy he doesn't know how to use a mobile phone and so on and so forth uh, one question out in the open is is that a myth according to you and secondly will at some point in time we look at also all of this e-commerce engagement happening and becoming more aware or empowering the farmers so that they are in the in the driving seat in a way not really taking the shots but driving seat because our understanding today when we look at it from outside is there is very little information that a farmer can actually get from the sector there is a lot of information that is available but it is not reaching him in terms of product or so so one so so the question is do you think the farmer is not technology savvy and if you think he is uh, will e-commerce doorstep delivery engagement all of this on a mobile platform actually become the new thing for the sector going forward again any one of you can take that See, as I mentioned, I gave some statistics also. So to say that farmer is not uh, tech savvy is not an accurate statement. In the sense, we have, as I said, 30 crore uh, active internet connections in the farmer. But it's going to take some time. It's not easy. The traditional distribution methods, which have developed over a period, a very long period of time, are very easy to not very easy to uh, do away with. Right. Another 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 impediment uh, normally happens in such kind of distribution networks is the issue of credit. See, the farmer sometimes uh, works on credit, not sometimes, most of the time. So in case of an online mechanism, unless you are able to tie up with the credit availability, there's going to be some limitation imposed. So these two things, uh, I would say, okay, some uh, uh, computer literacy or mobile literacy or technology literacy has to come in. Plus this issue of credit. If these two are answered uh, satisfactorily, and then I'm, I don't think there is any reason stopping this uh, spread of this e-commerce in the rural area. Uh, Satish, you wanted to add. Agreeing. Yeah. Yeah, I agree to what Sandeep said. There's a couple of things I just want to add. Other than the credit part, is in the long relationship with the farmer has a retailer. I think the last mile delivery is still a challenge. Uh, the transaction costs, to be very frank, in many of our uh, thing, which is bulky, especially you know the field crop business. I think the transaction cost and the last mile delivery cost, I think, still. Uh, we have to crack it. I know many companies have been working towards it, uh, but it's uh, still, I'd say, it's a bit of a challenge to do it. I think it will happen. I'm not saying it will not happen, but it uh, will definitely take some time and some more innovation to really make this happen. So I don't sure. think so. It's going to be a bed of roses for everybody. Mr. Rao, uh, your yeah. views on this? Yeah, it is happening in uh, uh, like vegetable seeds. It is happening quite regularly. Okay. Only thing the field crops, you know, as Satish mentioned, the bulk quantities are a real challenge. But, but you know, apart from this, the major thing is, you know, who, who bell the cat? Like, you know, see, if anybody wants to go through the traditional distributed network and simultaneously they run, you know, the e-commerce in a big way, the distributors and the dealers, you know, they will not show much interest. So that, that way, you know, 
so you have to manage very very tactfully that is very very key yeah. got it got it yeah. good so i think uh, you know we i've i've tried to cover almost majority of the questions um, still if there are some questions which are open i would request you know the attendees to reach out to us you know put it out in an email we will shoot these questions out to the panelists get an answer and come back to you um, first of all uh, i would thank all three of you for for sharing this time out you know sharing your views i think it was possibly very interesting for us i'm sure uh, more than 100 people that we had on on the webinar today as attendees would have taken something out of it the way i would want to summarize this and and please correct me if you think my summarization is not accurate is i think the covid 19 situation has possibly not been a pause but it's been a, a time for companies to really think and look at not changing the entire picture possibly but looking at how you can improve certain things in parts and uh, just going back to the slide that uh, you know sk was showing that it's all about iterate and improve so it's not about really going out and saying overnight we will change everything but i think at stages a uh, certain amount of visibility is very very essential now whether it is from the the provenance the breeding part of it the breeding to processing part of it whether it is the uh, distribution bit of it or whether it is the engagement bit of it and i think uh if we look at the entire covid situation if one thing that we need to take out of it possibly as a refresh is uh the fact that companies will start to look at this as time to reflect on saying if this is the least or this is the bottom there is going to be a bounce back post this so they say you know once you hit the 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 lowest point in a way from there on it is a rise so i think in that growth curve back that the hockey stick that everybody is talking about uh there will be some logical uh decisions that i feel the sector can take in terms of one looking at the digitalization picture of it maybe not fully to start with but in pieces whichever is the problem area for them uh, or the use case that they want to try and solve i think second understanding that i have is um uh, from the point of view of the entire situation uh, there will be a lot of digital engagement that the companies would want to ideally do with say farmers and consumers uh returns also although we could not really spend too much time because returns in itself is a big topic that can warrant a one hour discussion uh, in a webinar like this but i think uh, digitalization or digitization of all these and finally getting data back so that companies know that where whatever decision they are taking at some point in time is backed not just by experience but experience and data going forward at some point in time will be a better approach that's what my big picture understanding is i don't know if you guys want to add something before we we, we close the webinar does that in a way make sense at a bigger picture level yeah it does yeah. uh satish any last uh, uh parting thoughts before we close the webinar today anything that no, you want to add no i thank you very much i think you covered most of it in your wrap thank you mr rao no i think my only uh, observation here is you know the people are getting panic with the situation okay right. more than issue that you know the, uh, the, there is a problem but you know the approach to the problem you know situation should be in a positive way correct uh, unfortunately the many of the negative impacts can be addressed through proper you know uh, coordination and uh, planning so like you know people majority of the people are concerned about the cost cost of goods in uh, post covid situation see if you manage well the costs are not going to be challenges even revenues also not going to be challenges provided you know you try to rationalize certain things like returns so don't dispatch you know lavishly to the market because of covid situation getting returns is going to be a, a major uh, challenge so that means you know you need to do differently in this situation that that is the key that is the key so you cannot have a, a you know normal approach to uh, abnormal situation brilliant so that that is my
Uh, what I would like to say is I would like to congratulate the industry. As of now, in dark times, yeah. Agri probably is the only shining star. Correct. So even though we used to feel bad that India has 18% contribution coming into its GDP from agriculture, but we should be so thankful because agriculture is one of the very few sectors which is going to save the day for the country. So congratulations yeah. to all the participants. They have done a tremendous job under the yeah. difficult circumstances. And I hope this will continue to do this way. Thank you so much. Brilliant. Thank you so much, everyone. Thanks for coming in. Uh, thanks for sharing your views. Uh, so as I said, this is one of the many. So we've, we've started on a good note. I think we will continue this going forward and we will try to engage more with you. We'll get in more industry experts and possibly in the future take a specific topic because I think taking the entire agri value chain in one hour or one and a half hours ideally doesn't suffice. So good. Thank you once again. Um, I thank all the attendees to come in and uh, you know we will uh, keep doing this. Please uh, share your feedback with us so that we can improve. We will. I know this is the first time we were doing it. There would be a lot of teething challenges. So you know we are always open to understand and learn wherever we went wrong and whatever we can do better for the next time onwards. Good. Thank you so much. Take care. Keep safe and have thank a great you. day. Bye bye. bye. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.